Hi, I'm Dexter, and let's talk Caribbean genealogy. Researching your Caribbean family history, it's not easy. It's common to get frustrated and lose your motivation. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to recognize and overcome demotivation in your family history research. So what are the signs that you might be losing your motivation? You might be losing the excitement that you used to have. That That's a hint. If you start getting a little nagging in your head saying, Oh no, you can't do that. You don't know enough of this. You can't do that. You don't know. You're not smart enough to do this. Why did you think that it was a good idea to start doing this research? You need to just stop for a moment to see, like, where is that coming from? The next sign that you might be losing your motivation is... <laughs> you're just not rigorous with your research anymore. When you first started, you would be looking for all of the information in different places and you'd be, you know, calling family members and, and you know, digging through all of the information, but you're just not that bothered anymore. You, you don't even, you know, document what you've done so much. You, your, your notes, you know, aren't there and you, you don't save any of the images that you found and you, you don't you know, do any of that. You know, if you're not caring as much about this, you know, you need to stop for a moment and say, well, why am I doing this at this point in time? I need to maintain the quality of this. And if you don't really feel like you know, maintaining the quality, then you're losing your motivation. And this is negatively impacting on your research and you need to do something to rescue your project. The final sign is complete avoidance. You don't look anymore, you just, anyone ask you about it, you change the subject, you, you don't want anything to do with it at that point in time because you just feel so frustrated about it. That is a major warning sign that you have just completely lost your motivation and your research is at risk of not being completed. So how can you overcome demotivation? First things first, you need to schedule a check-in with yourself and you need to do it right now. The way that you check in is up to you. You can go and take a walk, you can go and go do some exercise, have a run, go to the gym, whatever it is that you, you, you need to do, even if it's you know, something else like, like cooking or turning the radio on and cranking the music right up and just having a bit of a dance and, and sing. Just to just have a moment to just Get whatever anxiety it is that you've got about what you're doing, just get it out of your system. Then you've got to acknowledge the feelings that you're having and try to put some words to them. Some people might write a, a journal or they might just listen to some of their, their favorite songs that they connect to, you know, when you're in your feelings. <laughs> What is it that you're feeling? You know, how can you put some words to that? And what exactly is the trigger point here? What aspect of the research is triggering you at this point in time? Doing you know, some of the, the research, you do find some very uncomfortable things, some tragic events, and you know, that might be something that could be the reason why you're losing your motivation because you know, some of it is just sad. But you also need to ask yourself, well, why am I doing this research in the first place? I've done a video about why I do my, my genealogy research. You can, it'll be up there somewhere, just click on that, you can watch that to find out why I do my research. But you've got to know for yourself exactly why you're doing it. Are you just curious about your family history? Are you trying to understand a specific time period or something specific about some you know, individuals within your family? Or are you really trying to you know, do something a bit more elaborate and you may want to create something more simple like a scrapbook or you want to do something more substantial like writing a book of some sort? You can only be the one to tell yourself, you know, what you really want to do with this. And, you know, sometimes it might just be for fun and that's okay. But you need to be honest with yourself why it is that you're doing your research. Then once you've 
done this, you just need to think about, well, what are the benefits that you get from doing your research? For me, I really feel much more connected to my, my family and the community that my family comes from. You have to know what you actually get out of this in terms of the value because if you think about that, then that will help you to then maybe want to go back to doing your research to get out of it what you want to get out of it. Now, how you can overcome these feelings that you've identified and you've put some, some names to and identified some trigger points, you can then start putting some plans together for how you are going to work through these blockers that you've got that are preventing you from moving forward in your research. And once you've identified you know, what's going on, then ask for help. And that help, it can be informal or it can be professional help. If you really are experiencing some emotional trauma, you need to talk about it with someone that you trust. That could be you know, someone that you've got in your life that you're close to, that you feel comfortable with you know, sharing your, your feelings. Or if you need to access therapy services, you need to do that. Now, you've got to plan how you're going to move forward and the first step is identify some positive action that you can take in order to move forward with your research. Positive action can be something that you put in place that will help you to improve and learn from past experiences or past mistakes that you've made in your research. So some positive action that you could take would be First off, having a process and sticking to it. That's, that, that's one way. So if you've got a way that you always look at documents and a way that you always go through your, your tree, just stick to that. Once you're doing something systematically the same way each time, you're not as likely to make mistakes and to get super frustrated with it if you've just got a way that you do things. And also recognizing that sometimes some information you are never going to find and you need to be okay with that. It's, it's not perfect sometimes, some new records may become available and that might be the way that you can move forward with things. But you need to be kind to yourself while doing this research because you know it's something that it takes time and sometimes you may not find it yourself but you need to leave the, the notes and the tracks and the research available for someone else to pick it up. Next, you need to get some genealogy buddies because doing this I know it's a very solitary thing but after a while you're going to just need to get some buddies and you need to find people that you, you gel with that might be researching a similar community or they might have you know similar challenges or it just might be someone that you just you just get on with you can find these people by joining a genealogical society or joining a facebook group of you know something that that has other people that are doing similar forms of of research that you're also interested in sometimes if you've done DNA, your DNA cousins also can be your genealogy buddies. And you know, there are some people that, well, you're not sure how you connect and you're just working on that together and you know, you keep sending questions and they send you some responses and some other questions and then you sort of keep each other motivated in, in doing your, your research. Now that you're back on your research, you want to embed systems and processes that help you to remain resilient and focused while doing your research. You need to ask clear research questions. These research questions are the cornerstone of your research. You need to organize your workflow and stick to a system. So all of my documents, they are in a folder and the folder is subdivided in 
the types of documents and I've got those then further subdivided and I've got the files themselves labeled with the surname, first name and the birth of the individual that corresponding document is is referring to. Once I've got a new document and I've gone through it and it's being processed and I've transcribed and I've put whatever information into my tree that I've extracted from that, then I've got it labeled so I can go back to it later. That helps me not have that really frustrating moment where you're like, I'm pretty sure I looked at this thing, but where did I save it? And then you have to do the research all over again. You don't want that. So. You've got to put those systems in place to help you stay motivated and that resilience is going to help you break through any obstacle that comes in your way during your research. Now you need to involve other family members within the research and if you have someone that's interested, no matter what their age, you just talk to them and give them some updates from time to time. They may have some questions that may actually stimulate a research question that you may want to pursue which can keep you motivated and then you know in a few weeks time when you talk to them again then you can feed back that information and they might also then want to join doing some, join you doing research as well so it's really nice to involve family members and your DNA cousins similarly they are often, you know, quite enthusiastic because, well, you've both been interested enough to not only do family trees, but then you've also done DNA. So, you know, you're motivated people. You can motivate each other. Connecting with other researchers as well as non-researchers, that really builds and expands your network. And it's really important to have that network in place to keep you motivated to deal with the frustrations and the disappointments. I would like to wish you every success with your research. This thing is not easy and it's really common to get really frustrated. We've all been there. But what's important is that you recognize what's happening and that you learn from any mistakes that you've made to overcome your demotivation and to get back on your research journey. And before you know it, you're going to be just Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, you know you want to subscribe. Leave a comment below if there's anything that you want me to cover in a future video. See you on the next one.